What we would like to do is uh, maybe walk with you in this space. Because the space is constructed as if there is a center, which is this very big, large room, and then there are the gullies which are to the side of the gallery. And in that sense, it talks about the idea that cities are normally, there's a center or a central part, and what happens around the city is very interesting. It's a sort of geography of looking at the center and the outsideness as such, and the people who occupy the notion of being outside of the center. So when, when Lena had made this uh, amazing info, uh, and very informative uh, photographs, it was obvious that what we, were, we had to do is to create a space which allowed people an understanding of the cities which they live in and how they operate, and how in operating they also disadvantage certain people, especially young women. And again, uh, the interesting thing was, and is a concept of babus and bibis. What does that mean in terms of the people who populate a city, beyond the children and beyond the economics of slaves and trafficking, which also occurs very much within city centers? Right. So what I think is interesting to understand that every aspect of this exhibition was designed to enhance the feeling of being somewhere somewhere, maybe in Calcutta, but Calcutta could be seen as an origin of looking at it, but this could be anywhere. This could be Amsterdam, this could be Rio de Janeiro, this could be in, in Dar es Salaam. All of them have the same predatory male masculinity that comes through in how it endangers young, innocent people. So we wanted to talk about everything here, which was falling apart. The wires are coming down. The, 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 the double imagery. You can't concentrate on anything at once. You look at an image like this, all of a sudden this woman is yawning in a middle-class bourgeois environment, but behind her are possibly skeletal buildings going up, which is about industry. Everything is interconnected. There is a relationship between two men, one who is a politician and one who is maybe a very middle-class person against a monument. Again, all of those three facets are interlinked. It's about power, it's about the city, it's about the state of nation, but it's also the state of our mentality, which is what we're trying to question. That what we have to look is that, and, and understand is that we have to be agents of change rather than just receptors of other people's. Here is the first little room. This is books, knowledge, the construction of places, where we go to visit as a library of information. Even within this, there is a certain amount of information which is available, which can help us. But people seem to be absolutely lazy in acknowledging that we have so many problems to deal with. Rather, we keep on adding to those problems by discarding them and putting them under the blanket or under the carpet. And here, in a sense, knowledge which is printed, books which are trying to be explicative about what's going on, are just in a sense, like a, a, a library which is discarded. And in that sense, these are lives and thoughts and thinking and philosophies which are discarded. So it is, in a sense, a, a room about knowledge, but knowledge which we have, and we have an understanding about slave trade. It's been here a very long time. We have a very astute understanding of sex trafficking. But, like these books, we just shelf it, thinking it will go away. And it will only go away when we make a decision to make it go away. So as you walk through the exhibition, you, you start to feel the, the claustrophobia, the, 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 the claustrophobic environment which we have created that allows you to get very near to some of the images. You're at very close proximity to, to key t uh, figures like Tagore, and also maybe to see spaces like this. And this is a space where maybe a child or a young human being ends up resting for the night if they're allowed to. Uh, and we wanted to create that relationship between a grand poet, a grand nationalist figure, and the figure of the, the, the victims of India, but also the victims of our world. So again, the, the whole corridor has been constructed, so you're not quite sure you're on your feet. You see images of women in the red light district against this very bright pink, incredibly decorated fabrics, because all they have are the fabrics which they wear, and the fabrics on the bed is the only joy they have. 
Everything else in the life is absolute miserable. And in misery, they have to survive the conditions and also the outrageous things which are done on their body by men on the whole. Again, you know, you, you're seeing images through other images, through another image. And this is known as a palimpsest, where you have, like a city, things that are just aesthetics and, and layers upon layers of the city is built up. And you're not quite sure which is the important part of the city anymore. For instance, is this, the tree growing, the important part of this image? Or is it the murti which has been constructed? Or is it the car? Or is it the doorway? Everything, excitingly, works against each other and to a certain extent cancels each other. Just like our mind, we have so much information about the world which cancels each other and in that sense we also cancel out innocence and also things which we should be holding on to as our spiritual rights on this earth for other people and the civil rights for other people, other human beings. So what we'll do is we'll continue now um, on to an image which is towards the end of the corridor which is an explicit image, in a sense, of a young child. And this young child, again, Lena has shot it, showing you very much th th that, that moment when the child is thinking, what has my world become? Where am I? What is this? It's that question that we all ask, why is it the way it is, and what can we do about it now? In the, the realm of the Bible, to a certain extent, certain men, the heroes create sort of grand narrative of histories and of lives and of our realities. Netaji is in a sense is a prominent figure, not only in India, but as you've seen in the world, the way that politics have become so corrupt and how politics and economics are part and parcel and bedfellows. And to a certain extent that heritage is something which we have to also fight against if we are to change society and to bring values, moral values, which we all believed was the idea of the state of the nation, the space of the nation. And in that sense, these heroic figures represent the potential for change, even the thinking for change, which has maybe still remains unformed. Un, you know, it yeah. remains as a thought rather than a reality. Yeah. And we'll go back into the main, main room now. Back in the other room, the same image is re-represented in the smaller room showing you the, the potential space of abuse, in a sense, and also the colors of abuse, because it is celebrated. These light bulbs, to a certain extent, allow you a place which is of celebration. But these bulbs also represent that sort of, they magnify how women and children, young children, and of certain ethnicities are used consistently to promote the idea of celebration on their body, an enactment of violence on their body. So it was, in a sense, created to suggest a space which you could, in a sense, uh, borrow a space where even the garland is there, suggesting some sort of conquest, some sort of welcome, but through somebody else's physical space. And we, we carry on with that, with this to uh, Murti. The handmade, possibly the, the reality of a mythology made it by hand. And they also make explicit ideas about male, female energies, ideas of history, ideas of icon iconographic relationship to the world, to our understanding of gods, goddesses, but also of power, sexual power, spiritual power, physical power, the manifestation. For instance, the mythology behind this figure is very interesting. A Kartikya is uh, actually worshipped by prostitutes because in hope that they will all, they'll get married in the next life, they'll have a normal uh, wedded life in the next life and so they always worship Kartikya and it's a very essential part of this collection. So nothing in a sense remains untouched by the idea of what happens to another human being. If you're about to abuse somebody, those lives are then tainted forever and they have to in a sense use whatever powers they can bring to themselves to get away from that abuse. Even the idea of using a god to allow themselves to be, in a sense, excused from the abuse of others. And we will now go to uh, the campaign room, talk about what, in a sense, an organization can do. What can you do with an organization's help? How is a non-government organization able to allow us to cleanse ourselves of the, the amount of you know, this humanity? the amount of power, excess power we're using on other human beings. So we should enter there.
have many welts on my body from being beaten. It used to hurt. They did not feed me well. In the morning I got rice. And in the evening, they used to give me rotten rice that they would buy outside. So we've created a kind of a mini campaign room because we, we, I don't want this whole exercise of trying to show this issue just to be an exercise. I want it to come out and materialize into something much more concrete. Now you are in the campaign headquarters of this installation conceived by Shaheen Mirali and Lina Kejriwal. The exhibition which is on the streets of Calcutta and on the sexualization and commodification of women ends here. You saw how women are commodified as housewives and yawning inside board bedrooms. You saw the bylanes behind the board housewives where women are made to sit on a bed waiting and waiting for customers. And now, in typical Calcutta style, you also see a campaign against this commodification and against the sexualization of women and young girls. You cross the goddesses and you cross the god that the women pray to so that they are not commodified in the next life. And you come into this room where my documentary, The Selling of Innocence, was playing to tell people about what trafficking is, what the slavery of women is. It shows how a whole system of slavery is set up. It also has information about what people can do to help, how to end, end the system. In the spirit of Calcutta, where campaigns are always run against slavery, against uh, commodification, against inequality. Also, there's a campaign by my organization, Apnea Women Worldwide, how you can join, how you can volunteer, how can women help each other to resist this exploitation. There are pamphlets put up as part of the installation, but also for the viewer to carry back a message of hope and the ability to do something, pamphlets and a newspaper called Red Light Dispatch has been strewn all around the campaign headquarters, just as in any other campaign headquarters. How women are writing their stories of hope, resistance, darkness, despair, and how to get out of it. How one sister in Calcutta is telling, uh, sharing her story of hope with another sister in Bombay. And that is what we want this exhibition to do. It has to travel from city to city so that well-read people get aware of the issue of sex trafficking, of the commodification of women, how the streets of Calcutta are the streets of the world, and how the same thing happens to people anywhere. They can also find a solution in the campaign of Apneya and in the stories of the women, of their hopes and despairs to do something about it.